All right, we are back again. As you can see, actually, the conversation goes backline or behind the camera. Now, here's the thing. Today, we are really looking at the performance of the economy, and I want us to attach everything that is we're talking about today to governance. So the question this morning is that it's actually the fact that we have a governance in the country that is pushing the country to this point where everybody is complaining about the performance of the economy. We have business persons crying. We have, we have businesses that are closing in. We have companies that are issuing profit warnings and cost-cutting measures. We are moving to the point where we feel that there's a certain lack of credit flow within the economy. This morning, we asked the question, is it true now from, that it's because of our government? Joined by Andrew Camilli this morning as we talk about these issues. Andrew, well, it's a pleasure to have you around, sir. Great. All right, so let's just jump straight into the first issue that we're talking about today. Now, a section of MPs, activists, and truck drivers say they would hold protests every Monday until the directive, and this directive we're talking about, that the directive against the order to move cargo on SGR. They're saying they're going to hold protest every Monday until it's taken out. Now, Mvita, MP, Mvita sorry, MP Abdul Sumad Nasir said that on paper the policy was rescinded, but on the ground it is being implemented. He actually refuted claims that the coast legislators were financing the protesters who had announced plans to mobilize residents to boycott this year's Mashuja Day to be presided over by President Uhuru Kenyatta at the newly refurbished Mamangina grounds in Mombasa. <clears throat> this is not the first time that we're talking about this here on Business M, Mr. Kamili. Right. Now, SGR, as we know of it, was touted to be one of the biggest projects in this country in terms of revitalizing the economy. They said that every system for the country is going to move through SGR, and we're going to talk about other sectors of the economy that are going to realize the potential because of SGR. But now, when we look at the freight services, let's not even talk about the passenger services, which we do know are doing fine, yeah. and I don't think, even by the fact that we're not hitting the targets, that we're going to get any better. Right. But the freight services that now we thought would actually take the business in the country from the road to the freight services, yeah. it's not clicking. And now the government is at a spot where it's either you use it or you use it. Because essentially we want you to use it. Well, uh, the government finds itself between a rock and a hard place. Yes. The government, on the one hand, wants to sustain the SGR and to find something tangible out of it. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, the government has to do what the people want because we are a democratic country and uh, we really don't have to push people to the wall and compel them to do what the government wishes. Yes. Now, it is very unfortunate that the government has had to reach a stage where they are they, they're compelling people to use the SGR to transport their cargo to Nairobi or even further to Naivasha. It is even more unfortunate that uh, there's a, they're, they're employing mechanisms of barring road transport over yes. the same. Now, my view would be that the government should have a consultative engagement with uh, those who are concerned in uh, the transportation industry and find an amicable solution because uh, it is not wise for them to tell the transporters to use uh, uh, the SGR to transport their cargo. Yes. Now, the question that also arises is uh, to this extent, as the SGR achieved its uh, purpose uh, economically, in my view, it hasn't. In fact, the motive for putting up the SGR was not to transport passengers, was to transport the cargo because the passengers would not be able to sustain the, 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 the cost of putting up the SGR. Now, the country has, or those who are doing the transportation, have clearly refute, refuted the idea or refused to employ the idea of using SGR because apparently they say it is very expensive. You have to drop your goods at uh, Embakasi and then yes. find a way of bringing them into town or even further there. 
Now, until the government then again employs a better way, it's like in business, when you notice that your customers are not buying your goods because of some services they require, maybe an after-sales service of transportation or delivery. The government needs then to go that route because they decided to join business. Yes. This is a government business. Yes. So they don't have to compel people. They need to convince people into using... Into what actually do. using it, yes. isn't it? And, and the question I'm going to ask you this morning is this. I mean, Mr. Kamili, when we look at the leadership in this country, yeah. and this also goes there, because it's the the other day we did have the sayers come and say look it's actually cheaper but there's a cost that he didn't want to talk about mm -hmm. it's the last mile good i'm going to take them to mombasa that's fine i'm going to take them to Nairobi. that's fine mm -hmm. but when i'm going to factor in the cost of now moving them from that depot yeah. to where i need it to be yeah. that's where the cost comes in yes and so my question this morning to you is this yeah we have a product that we want people to use. And you're telling us, yes, yes, it's cheaper. Yeah. When you actually look at it, why is it becoming a problem for the government, therefore, to call all these partners and tell them, look, we want to find for you a solution. Let's see exactly what it is I use for the last mile. That's fine. We're going to factor that every time and sort of give you discounts every time that you're coming to use our product. But the what we are seeing now is that, well, well, you can use it. You have to use it. You can use wood. The problem with uh, the Kenyan government, and particularly the policy formulators of this government, yes. is that they, they choose to use cosmetic means of uh, solving problems rather than really the tangible means of finding solutions to these problems. Mm -hmm. For instance, a business person has complained to you that uh, the problem is not in the cost of transportation to Nairobi. The problem is the cost they incur from the terminus in Nairobi to their, their required station. So. If a government is uh, keen enough, they would find a solution to that problem and not start yelling at uh, the transporters and telling them, no, you have to use it. Now, what if I use 50,000 to transport my cargo from Mombasa to my station where I want it? Yes. And I'd be using 40,000 to do the same to Nairobi and another 20,000 to take it to where I want it. That means I'll be incurring 10,000 shillings more. Yes. And no, at this stage of, of the economy, no businessman wants to incur more costs. So until the government then sits down and finds solutions in an amicable way and talks to those who are complaining and even get ideas from them, then they'll be able to move forward. But with the push and pull, mm -hmm. that is where we have, that is what has caused us to reach this place we are at now. Yes, my yeah. question to you th yeah. is this. Now you have a CS who has actually appeared in front of a committee that yeah. even Vita MP was actually there I and remember. a few partners who are actually the leaders in terms of road transport and freight services yeah. in this country, where he told them, look, Whatever it is you're saying about this being expensive, it's not. Why is it? I mean, we do know how businesses run. I mean, yeah. every business person would always and always take the cheaper option. Definitely. So what's coming out from here is that somebody is lying. Well, the government has always, uh, has always uh, had the, the leeway yes. of lying to the people and expecting the people to accept their lies as they are you notice that uh, even on security reports the government would just come up with something they think is convenient for them yes and they expect the people to you know have it and accept it as, as it is mm -hmm. in this case this is a matter that is touching on people's lives we are touching on employment of people we are touching on people's personal businesses they will not take your life for what you for what you tell them they will have to question every bit of the statement in this case they are questioning the cost of transportation from the station to where they want it yes. if the government is able to give a solution to that i don't think any transporter or any businessman would not but go for it no, because you have just said yes. earlier that a businessman will always go for the cheaper version yes if we can get a cheaper version in the sense that the government will tell you that from the depot to the other we have provided trucks yes. that will do that of course uh, it will be a bit expensive on the government but that is business sometimes some of us who are in business will have to do deliveries mm -hmm. even if it is that expensive or even say we are going to do deliveries far away at a cost which is more reasonable. But you won't tell people we have built the SGR and we wanted the country to use the SGR and you have to use it. It will not happen. It will not happen. Will not the last question on this, that for Mr. Kamili this yes, morning sir. is this. Yes, it sir. costs us almost 12 billion yes. to actually operate SGR. Yeah. Versus what we are making now, yeah. which could be around six, five, five billion. Yeah. So we have to draw in an extra seven billion at the end of each year yeah. to actually support SGR. So mm -hmm. what remains of this project? How are we supposed to think about it? Because as things stand, right now, it is costing Kenya. President Kenyatta has always been called out for his quick and, and uh, policies that are not well thought out. Yes. 
And uh, in the circumstances of the SGR, this was very well anticipated and everybody complained that first the cost of putting up the SGR was so inflated compared vis-a-vis -vis the cost in other countries, in Ethiopia and Senegal and other countries. Now this is where the problem originated from. We built SGR at a very inflated cost. And even the running of SGR, to my understanding, is a bit inflated. Yes. And uh, just a few months ago, there was already uh, some information that those who pretend to be running the SGR are not far from us, as we, ex as we were told. They are within this country, and they're taking advantage of uh, the, the transportation of SGR. So it would be important that the government in itself is honest with the people and honest with itself if they want to find a solution. Yes. But until that is done, the government will always find a difficulty. But the problem is... Why do we think that the government finds a difficulty? The government is us. These people think that we should bear the cost, so they don't feel the weight. That is where the problem is. If the government would feel the weight in a manner in which the Mamamboga in the village feels the weight, then this problem will be solved. Very much, isn't it? Yes. Sir. All right, let's cross over to another issue this morning. Now, SRC. The body with the mandate for proposals and recommend recommendations on government spending recently proposed to have the pensions for the former president slashed. Now, the Treasury rejected this proposal even as the president continues the tough talk against members of parliament by saying, you cannot wish to bypass SRC in coming up with the annex. Now, the new acting CSE attorney, same keen on reducing the wage bill in the country through reducing ghost workers and cutting back common unnecessary expenditure like glacier activities. Everybody knows now that the biggest shortfall or setback to this government, Mr. Kamili, is the wage bill. We currently stand at 53% versus our collection. Which to an extent I dispute because I, I feel the government has found a mechanism of exciting the masses. They will tell you that MPs earn a lot of money and uh, they use a lot of money on expenses. When in real sense, uh, compared to the, to the budget that we have, the members of parliament don't even go to a big percentage as would hurt the economy. Would you say so, Mr. Kamil? I would say that with authority because consider this. Yes. Members of parliament, I mean the parliament itself. Yes. I think takes a paltry 35 billion every year, right? Yes. Compared to what the presidency takes, the problem is in the executive. There's a lot of wastage in the executive of this country, not even ju the judiciary. If at all the government would curb the wastage and run away corruption in this country, we would solve these problems. For instance, right now, Kim Warrior Dam and Aror, one of them has been uh, put aside at a cost of 19 billion. Where are we going to get that money? 19 billion, the, the parliament itself runs at a cost of 35 billion a year. That means we have already thrown away half the budget of the parliament. Yes. And we cannot find it now. Nobody's going to be taken to task to explain to us where the 19 billion has gone to. Yes. Yeah, so these are some of the things that I think if I'm sorting, yes. The government for the wage bill are such as we are doing right now. It, it, is, it is interesting you should say that. And this yes. is what me and you, you and I don't actually see from the same point. Yes. And many people will actually look at this issue and then you, you, there's a, the other side of the coin. Right. You have a new CS who's yeah. called Yatani and he's yeah. come to office. Yeah. I mean, he is part of the government, isn't it? Yeah. And he's looking at it and saying, wow, I think we've seen exactly what he's done. He's come in with proposals to cast down on, go on ghost workers. He's come down on proposals to actually cut down expenditure. So many, he does know very well that a wage bill is actually way up huh. there. Yeah. And if there's a place to start from, you look at one of the top owners in this country, and they don't go far. They're just within the government. Yeah. So would you time. say that, mm -hmm. therefore, why are they, number one, saying SRC is going to tell you exactly how much it is that you're supposed to earn, and don't go beyond them. It starts with them, ends with them. Now, the same same body you've empowered within the Constitution yeah. tells you, okay, that's fine. We're going to give you proposals. Number one, cut down the pensions of former presidents in this country. Yeah. And the same same office, Mr. Kamili, says no. Mm -mm. Well, uh, so the, would we listen to the, the SRC is an is an independent institution. Is it within the, the constitution? Yes. And yes. The, the tragedy with our country is we don't really give much respect and weight to independent institutions and even institutions that are given to us by the constitution. Yes. Now, there's also t the aspect of politics that comes into play that SRC might not be aware because they're not politicians. The president would look at it and wonder, 
it would be in my year, it would be in my time that the former presidents were mistreated when we shall propose that we cut their pensions. Now that is a very pol political uh, angle and uh, I think that is what the president is looking at and that is what the CS is looking at. Despite the fact that SRC advised them to do that, I don't think it would be possible for him to do it. That because it is it is so political. It, it, now, would now, you say would you say it's political, Mr. Kamili? I mean, you have a body here that you've actually empowered and told them, help me. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually help me. Now, help me figure the twenty percent. Yes. Now, un unfortunately. Yes. Unfortunately, because uh, the president doesn't want to appear to yes. have frustrated his colleagues, uh, his his predecessors. And is that where the problem starts? That is exactly what the problem is, as I've been telling you, Mr. Yes. Charles. Yes. That our country seems to be more more interested in cosmetic uh, approaches to uh, solving our problems. Does it depend on the country right. on sentiment? I can't do this because of A, B, C, D. There's, there's always that in Kenya, and uh, we can't solve it. We, we can just live with it. The president has shown that uh, he will tell you this today and implement something otherwise tomorrow because he has his personal reasons, yes. political reasons, yes. that really we cannot understand. You know, let me tell you the implication of this, Mr. Kameli. Just the other day, we do know the biggest announcement that Yatani is oh, about yeah. to make. Yeah. I mean, we could wait his few weeks in office and say, well, we haven't seen that much. Yeah. I mean, everybody expected for him to come and say, well, this is where a wage bill is, this yeah. is where public debt is, yeah. and this is what I'm going to do for the few years right. or for the few months. Yeah to actually try and manage it. We haven't seen that. The only biggest announcement is done is that I'm going to support the president, run this country under the Big Four agenda. Right. And we are seeing it <laughs> failing it day by day. Now, yeah. the biggest announcement is that there is a law yeah. within our constitution that says that we should not borrow more than 50% of our GDP. Yeah. As it sounds now, we've actually borrowed more. Now, just the other day, now, we anticipate is going to announce that we can actually borrow 9 trillion shillings. That means not eight, not, not six, not seven, nine. nine trillion shillings. And these are the factors we're talking about here. Now you have a government that doesn't know what to do. Kiaris told me we can't help you. We're going to do our best level. The economy is not performing, I, but I at think, the same mm, time, people want to get paid. I, th I think uh, the government is clearly giving up. And, uh, you know, when, when they're giving up, they're trying to clutch on everything yes. or anything they can find. Yes. It is very unfortunate that we would uh, go down into such levels. But let me tell you, even in common business, credit facilities are very important, just like in government. There's no harm in the government borrowing. Yes. Of course, there are regulations, and uh, we have to regulate the manner in which the government is borrowing. But the problem with our country is that we have borrowed too much that we can't trace the impact to the economy. And we, we have a lot, more. and we want to borrow more. Yes. We don't know. We cannot keep it in there. It's money that is for instance, we borrow 100 billion for the purposes of just one dump, which is actually problematic, isn't it? It's actually problematic as you well. Know, you know. Yes. So that is where the problem is. We have borrowed a lot, but a lot has gone into people's pockets for the purposes of campaigns, political yes. campaigns, and such kind of things. And yes. Primitive accumulation of wealth. If the president was able to you know, do something about primary corruption. Trust me, Mr. Charles, we'd be far ahead we'll of be far ahead, ahead. But we're not seeing that happen, Mr. Kamili. As you can actually see, now the next topic that we have for you this morning is that KRA has revised its tax targets for 2019-2020. Mm -hmm. It is blaming a slow reaction of the economy from 2017, which it says has affected the performance of the corporate earnings in the country. While this happens, there seems to be an ending struggle for leaders parks and allowances with govern with conversations on county revenue sometimes taking the backstage now mcs continue to have their way in scoring grants with their counterparts in the national house always charting avenues on pay and more allowances and county governments are actually failing to show the benefits of the devolution years on and everybody says this, Mr. Kamili, that's exactly what it is that we're talking about. Yeah. Is that we have a national expenditure that is going nowhere. The conversations that actually don't take so much to get proper charts are about allowances and pay increases and, 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 and how county governments should get more money. But when it comes to what we need to show of it, it's not there. Well, Businesses are struggling because, yes, 
they are doing business with the governments, but the money is not coming through. Well, from the onset, I want to say that uh, when Kenyans voted for the constitution in 2010, yes. really they didn't know much about what should come with that constitution. But for those who had read it, they yes. were aware that this constitution was going to bring that much weight to the economy. Now, we might complain that uh, the county governments are receiving a lot of money for which we cannot uh, you know, put a finger to what they have done with this money. Yes. But uh, so far, so good in my analysis. There are the counties that are doing good. There are counties that are doing terribly bad. But that it's really... what the Auditor General is telling us, that some of the way in which we are spending this money, yeah. it's wrong. In fact, we expected that. That uh, That is what democracy gives us. Yeah. In some counties, we'll have good governors. In other counties, we'll have very messed up people. In Homabe County, personally, the county that I belong to, yes. there is serious problem. The contractors and suppliers, they have not been paid for years into teams of millions and billions of money. And these monies have been diverted for personal gain. The government, the, 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 the DPP has, has you know, been doing investigations there. The DCI has been making arrests there. Really, we haven't seen much. Yes. But this is the problem with these counties, that money has been taken down there, but most of the money has been diverted into personal projects and not projects that would benefit the people. For instance, if we were to say that the, one of the functions of the county governments is education under the ECD program, in this country today, we should not be watching on TV that some counties have, you know, mud touched and, and uh, I mean, grass touched uh, walls, I mean, grass touched uh, classrooms as their ECD classes. If we knew, if really we understood why devolution was brought, it was supposed to bring money to the people and have an impact on the people on the ground. If the governors would understand that and detach politics of enriching themselves from uh, the money that comes from devolution, then we'd be far from where we are today. This morning, we were questioning, and we are still questioning, the role of our governors. Let's take leadership really in this country in terms of the way in which the economy looks today. Guess what? This conversation goes online, Mr. Kamili. Thank you very much for coming to Metropole TV Studios this morning. Thank Always you. a pleasure to have Great. you around. Great. We take a short break once we come back. More sector trends.